out of all the desserts in the Magic Kingdom, and there are a lot of them, one's gotta come out on top. Today we're ranking each and every restaurant, counter service, and kiosk in Magic Kingdom to decide where you can find the best desserts. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Now everyone's got a favorite Disney dessert and we're getting ready to shake up some controversy by ranking every restaurant in the Magic Kingdom by their sweet treats. We're talking tiny kiosks all the way up to Cinderella's Royal Table, all ranked by how delicious their final course is. In the interest of being thorough, we've included a few places that are very rarely open or otherwise have some questionable or super limited dessert choices. You'll see what I mean in just a second. Oh, and if you don't want to write all these down, head to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash MKDessertsRanked to get a free PDF list of all the snacks we're about to rank. Just sign up for our also free newsletter to get the latest Disney info and snacks right in your inbox. All right, number 30 is going to be Cool Ship and the Frontierland Churro Cart. Yeah, we're talking churros. Cool Ship and the Frontierland Churro Cart are smashed together because, well, they only have churros for dessert. While we love a good churro, these are nothing spectacular to write home about. Nothing like what you're going to get in Disneyland. So you're going to want to save room for our picks further up on the list. Speaking of, number 29, Aunt Polly's. Now you are forgiven if you're currently asking yourself, uh, where and what is Aunt Polly's? This counter service spot is located on Tom Sawyer Island and is hardly ever open. Really, it's only open for like Easter break, like spring break, a little bit in the summer, a little bit at Christmas. It's very, very rarely open. But when it is open, the menu typically includes a classic root beer float and a peanut butter, chocolate, hazelnut, and banana sandwich, which oddly comes with potato chips. Not really dessert and not really lunch, so it's staying at number 29 on the list, but it is unique and interesting. Number 28, Tomorrowland Terrace Restaurant, another rarely open location. This one lists a Rocky Road brownie on their menu, although it hasn't been open in order for us to actually try it. The restaurant, or at least its patio, hosts the happily ever after dessert party. So in a way, this location is only dessert. So long as you don't mind shelling out 80 bucks to $100 per adult for dessert. Arguably, it does now include wine and beer, but we still got a lot better picks on the list. So Tomorrowland Terrace Restaurant, you're never open, so how can we list you that highly? Number 27 is Lunching Pad, another spot to grab a churro, but here we're leaning towards the cream cheese stuffed pretzel. This sweet pretzel is filled with a sweet cream cheese. It's so good. You're going to find it at a few places around Disney World, but Lunching Pad is probably going to be your main specialty pretzel spot in the Magic Kingdom. So good, but when it comes to desserts, this is probably more of a snack than dessert, so get this one for your snack option. All right, number 26, Liberty Square Market. If you're a fruit for dessert person, this is your spot. It's a plus one for healthy options, but otherwise it's just whole fruit at this stand. So not a lot of variety here. But if you are looking for fruit, if you are trying to stick to a low sugar or whole foods diet, this is a great option for you. Number 25, Westward Ho Refreshments. Not much in terms of dessert here either, unless you consider candied bacon a dessert, which we definitely could, especially if you're looking for some protein instead of a straight carby dessert. We actually like the chicken skewer here better, but that's obviously not dessert. Moving on to number 24, Golden Oak Outpost. So this little stand between Adventureland and Frontierland has brought us some awesome onion rings and other savory treats. But today we're here for the warm chocolate chip cookie. This cookie is standard, but not boring and definitely delicious and comes served warm so your chocolate chips are nice and melty. All right, heading across the way to Tortuga Tavern. This is right across from Pirates of the Caribbean, real close also to Golden Oak Outpost. And it's a tavern which fittingly has a rum cake as its only dessert option most of the time. This reminds us of the sticky toffee pudding at Rose and Crown, but without all the good creaminess of it. Perfectly fine if you're already getting lunch here, but at number 23, we've still got a ways to go to get to the top. Number 22, Cosmic Ray's Starlight Cafe, another restaurant with very few dessert options. In fact, sometimes there's only one. S'mores have been on the menu here since 2016 and reviews are mixed. It's basically kind of a graham cracker cookie cake kind of thing stuffed with marshmallow and chocolate. It kind of looks like a pop tart without the icing. Lacking the caramelized marshmallow of a real s'more, this was all right, but we've got better options. This is clearly kind of frozen, reheated dessert. Seems like something you can get in your grocer's freezer versus something you want to spend a lot of money on as far as a dessert. 
Next up, Diamond Horseshoe. We don't really have a review of the desserts currently on the menu, but previously we liked the peaches and cream cheesecake that was part of a dessert trio. They now have a singular cherry cheesecake only at lunch, basically swap the peaches for cherry and make it a little bigger, and at dinner you'll find a s'mores cake. Overall, Diamond Horseshoe doesn't win too many awards for food quality. It's pretty much just an overflow table service location for when everything else is booked up. So this is not the place you want to go for dedicated dessert, but they do at least have some desserts. So that's good. Next up, Anti-Gravity's Galactic Goodies. While the menu doesn't currently list any specialty Dole Whips, the location has had the Christmas cookie shake and pumpkin sundae for holidays along with a few character cones. Like that super cute The Adventure is out there cone and the 23 19 cone. It's generally just a good place to check for specialty Dole Whips. Otherwise, it's pretty standard smoothies and a brownie sundae. But when they have specialty stuff, it's really, really fun. All right, number 19, Crystal Palace. Now, Crystal Palace is a buffet, so dessert options might be different when you get there. But if you see the brownies with caramel and toffee, definitely get some. Gonna be honest, the toffee and caramel threw me for a loop at first, but they were so good. Definitely better if you get a fresh batch. So if the pans are getting low, maybe wait a few for a fresh one. Columbia Harbor House is next, number 18. This next one is a new snack at Columbia Harbor House, the Minnie Mouse Chocolate Lava Cake. This thing is super, super chocolatey, so if you're not a giant chocolate fan, this is probably not for you. It's a chocolate chip cookie filled with molten chocolate, topped with buttercream and a chocolate mini bow, served warm so the chocolate is super gooey. Again, very, very sweet. So probably one to share unless you've got a big, big sweet tooth. Next up, Pecos Bill Telltale Inn and Cafe. Okay, we couldn't totally dish churros by leaving them at the bottom of the list. At Pecos Bill, you'll find mini churros with chocolate sauce. Now, we're pretty sure the number of little churro bites comes out to a bit more than a standard churro in quantity. Plus, they're easier to share, especially with little hands. And the chocolate sauce comes with an order rather than the extra $1 they cost at the churro carts. Moving on to number 16, the Jungle Navigation Company Limited Skipper Canteen. With a name that's a nod to the old Adventurers Club in downtown Disney, how could we resist the Kungaloosh here? Chocolate cake with caramelized bananas served with cashew caramel ice cream and topped with coffee dust. The cake is more like a brownie, but that ice cream is absolutely delicious. And to all our fellow adventurers, we say Kungaloosh. Number 15 is Cinderella's Royal Table. Okay, we're halfway through, you guys. Cinderella's Royal Table is serving up one of the most decadent desserts on our list. The clock strikes 12. Now, is this domed white chocolate mousse covered in dark chocolate ganache worth the $75 per person you'll spend to dine here? No, but if you're already planning to meet the princesses and have lunch or dinner here, this is gonna be our pick for dessert. Number 14, Pinocchio Village House. For another princess-inspired treat, head to Pinocchio Village House for the Tangled Eclair. This one is super Instagrammable and a super tasty snack. It's topped with white chocolate whipped cream, which is designed to look like Punzi hair, of course, sugar flowers, purple crackling, and a chocolate frying pan. The inside is filled with dulce de leche, which gives it a strong caramel flavor. It's almost too cute to eat. Number 13, Tony's Town Square. How else would you wrap up a classic Italian meal than with classic tiramisu? This has been my favorite dessert here at Tony's for years, even if the rest of the meal isn't always spectacular. I'm not even a huge fan of tiramisu, but I love this one. Layers of espresso-soaked ladyfingers, whipped mascarpone, and chocolate shavings. It's a delicious version of a classic. It's so creamy and so rich, and you can really taste the flavors of the high-quality ingredients. So, Tony's Town Square, not an awesome location generally probably wouldn't be this high up if we were just ranking Magic Kingdom restaurants generally, but when it comes to dessert, they're doing a good job with that tiramisu. All right, next up, the Plaza Restaurant. The big shakes topped with donuts may be gone for now from the menu, but you can still get bottomless classic shakes, including the peanut butter cup. The chocolate cake is also excellent, as is that butterscotch bread pudding, which is in our top three Disney bread puddings. It's served in a skillet topped with ice cream, which melts beautifully on the warm pudding. It's just about perfect. Next up, Be Our Guest Restaurant. Originally, the gray stuff was just a special celebration dessert at Be Our Guest. You guys remember when you had to be like having a birthday or an anniversary or something and the server would have to bring out the gray stuff as a specialty thing for you? But the Master's Cupcake was added to the menu in 2013 and now anyone can get the gray stuff. The gray stuff, which is actually a cookies and cream panna cotta mousse that's been whipped into a creamy dessert, tops a chocolate cupcake with that Master's Cupcake. This one's only available at breakfast and lunch. Dinner is a prefix meal and comes with a dessert trio, including the gray stuff in a white chocolate chip cup.
All right, number 10 is Gaston's Tavern. Because their cinnamon roll is the closest we're gonna get to that amazing OG cinnamon roll from the Main Street Bakery that isn't around anymore. And we gotta say, so long as you load this thing up with icing, you won't really taste the difference. This is basically the best cinnamon roll you're gonna get at Disney World. Although a case could be made for the colossal cinnamon roll, I know, I know you guys, I get it. And yet there's still more Magic Kingdom desserts that beat it out. Number nine, Cheshire Cafe. Okay, looks can definitely be deceiving. The Cheshire Cat Tail may look like a basic Danish, but that's not what it is. This is one of our favorite snacks in all of Disney World, and it is so much more than the sum of its parts. It's a chocolate twist Danish with that purple and pink icing crisscrossed on the front to look like the Cheshire Cat's tail. But you guys, it's amazing. It's served warm and gooey. And I honestly never would have gotten it if I didn't have to for the blog, but now it's a go-to every time I'm a Magic Kingdom kind of thing. So, so good. Number eight is Storybook Treats, home to the OG character Dole Whip treat, the Peter Pan float, which is Sprite with lime Dole Whip and a chocolate feather. It's very pretty and super refreshing on a hot day. And Storybook Treats also has been home to the Lost Princess, Maleficent, and Tink cones. So be on the lookout for some specialty Dole Whip treats at this Fantasyland spot. You can also sometimes find that yummy mini cookie dough sundae here, which is incredible. At Christmas time, they have great treats. Honestly, this is a go-to for seasonal treats for sure and on the daily they've got great options as well so storybook treats small but mighty all right, number seven, the Plaza Ice Cream Parlor. Our favorite from the Plaza Ice Cream Parlor is the All-American Sundae. Old-fashioned vanilla and chocolate ice cream topped with hot fudge, peanut butter sauce, whipped cream, and a beautiful red cherry. Simple and perfect. You can't go wrong with any of the sundaes here, though, or a kid's comb with chocolate disc Mickey ears. By the way, remember, even if you're a grown-up, you can still ask for Mickey ears on your ice cream cone. And keep an eye out for specialty sundaes that are only around for a limited time. These do pop up. Seasonally, sometimes for a month or two, depending on what they're celebrating, so definitely check out what's new. All right, Main Street Bakery. This is the Starbucks location in the park, but don't let that fool you. They've often got some great, unique desserts in the bakery case that you're not necessarily going to find at every other Starbucks in America. The cupcake of the moment is usually our pick here. Most recently, it was the Cinderella Mousse Cake. Yes, the specialty treat isn't always a cupcake per se, but it rotates regularly. Some are definitely better than others. Good thing we review all of them over at Disney Food Blog so you can see which ones are worth your snack credits. All right, number five, Sleepy Hollow, the fruit waffle with chocolate hazelnut spread. This one makes our top snacks list all the time and for good reason. A hot, freshly made waffle topped with strawberries, blueberries, and bananas, and a nice spread of Nutella. Totally delicious. Don't forget here, you can also get those Mickey waffles with strawberries and whipped cream or without. You can get funnel cakes here. They've got the homemade cookie ice cream sandwiches here. So many good desserts, so much good stuff. Definitely save some some snack credits for Sleepy Hollow. Oh, and also Sleepy Hollow is a great place to find seasonal treats for Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party, Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. There's often really, really good seasonal treats here as well. Next up, Casey's Corner. Okay, you guys are going to disagree with me on the placement of Casey's, I know. This is another super simple but delicious dessert though, the baseball brownie from Casey's Corner. From time to time, this brownie will get a different design, but they're all simple, classic, and tasty. Super rich, fudgy brownies with various icings on top. I don't know what it is about these, you guys. They're one of my favorites on property. Honestly, I will eat this before I'll eat the Nutella waffle situation over at Sleepy Hollow. I can't tell you why, I'm just ranking them, but this is a great dessert. All right, we're headed over to Sunshine Tree Terrace. If you're still even watching, maybe you're not. Maybe you got so mad at me about Casey's Corner, <laughs> but hopefully you are. So we're getting into the top three now. So if you've watched the channel before and know your Disney snacks, you know what's coming, right? The Citrus Swirl. You're gonna find the Citrus Swirl at Sunshine Tree Terrace. This one is basically vanilla soft serve swirled with frozen orange juice. That's essentially what it is. Super tart and super sweet together. It's an amazing, awesome treat and it is a classic in Disney World. Every once in a while they try to take it away, but they always bring it back. Also at Sunshine Tree Terrace, you can get a couple of fun floats. The Fomosa, which is that orange and vanilla swirl with sparkling apple cider served in that fun champagne flute. It's a beautiful treat to get. And you can get several seasonal floats as well. So definitely go check out the menu, see what's new. 
All right, headed over to Aloha Isle. For more Dole Whip enjoyment, head to the other side of the magic carpets to Aloha Isle, the largest Dole Whip location of the Magic Kingdom. Here you're going to find more flavors and a lot more interesting concoctions, though Sunshine Tree Terrace usually has a few unique floats, like we said. First up, the Pineapple Upside Down Cake. This is my go-to favorite. I love this treat. It's moist, delicious on its own, but top it with some classic pineapple Dole Whip. We've got a serious pineapple winner. We also need to give a shout out to the Kaka Mora float. We talk about it a lot on the channel, but it's our favorite of the new floats that have been popping up around Disney World. This one's coconut dole whip with pineapple juice, blue curacao, and a chocolate cake pop made to look like Kakamura coconuts from Moana. Try it next time you're there. We promise you won't be disappointed. Don't forget you can also get the raspberry dole whip here and you can get it swirled with the pineapple. Really, really delicious sweet tart there. And finally, our number one Liberty Tree Tavern. Of course, this is our top pick, the ooey gooey toffee cake from Liberty Tree Tavern. I know, surprised me too the first time I had it. For those who haven't tried it, this isn't cake. It's more like a crispy on the outside, gooey on the inside, toffee, chocolate chip, cookie-ish sort of thing, topped with ice cream and more chocolate and toffee. It's basically one of the best desserts at Disney World and definitely in the Magic Kingdom. So what do you think of our ranking? Do you agree? Are you totally at odds with how we rank churros? Do you think there's a better dessert in the Magic Kingdom? Let us know in the comments. And if you're planning your next trip and want to bring along a copy of these snacks, don't forget to go to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash MKDessertsRanked to get a free download of the whole list just for signing up for our also free newsletter. Thank you guys for listening. Thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.